Well, now, look, for how many more elections do we have to endure this unresolvable nonsense about climate change? I venture to say when the left, sadly mirrored by some in government, talk about net zero emissions, many of them couldn't tell us what these emissions are and where Australia figures in the problem. Forgive me, but I'm not going to help them. But a couple of things need to be said before I talk to one of the people smart enough to understand all of this, Senator Matt Canavan. First is we talk today, fossil fuels, in particular coal and gas, satisfy 83% of primary energy demand around the world. The second point, while we pursue this selfishness of trying to obliterate coal from the equation, more than 600 million people in Africa have no access to electricity at all. 78% of those who do satisfy their energy needs do it by humanity's oldest renewable fuel, wood. Of course, in the ideological indulgent West, people like the then US President Obama, hosting a summit of African leaders in 2014, said he envisaged Africa being dotted with solar panels and wind turbines. The African leaders told him they wanted more fossil fuels. Indeed, the Tanzanian Minerals and Energy Minister said, we'll start intensifying the utilisation of coal. Why shouldn't we use coal, he said, when there are other countries where their carbon dioxide per capita is so high, we'll just go ahead. You then have people like the CEO of Macquarie Bank on a salary of millions telling us that the coal industry is on its way out. On the same day, people in the game like Coronado Global Resources were telling us that coking coal prices have risen by 24% and they reported record quarterly revenue. I mentioned the other night that the Institute of Public Affairs had done some outstanding research work on this, demonstrating that coal and gas investments, both fossil fuels, in the Hunter region alone are expected to produce 22,000 jobs, 7% of the region's labour force, injecting $12 billion into the region, equivalent to a fifth of its current gross regional product. Go net zero, as advocated by these left-wing loonies, all that's foregone. Can I urge them to check with the Australian Bureau of Statistics, where resource revenue last year to Australia, export revenue, was $351 billion, 351,000 million, up 21% on the previous record set in 2019. In fact, resources contributed 68% of Australia's total export revenue last year, and of that, coal contributed 62 billion, up 43% from 2020. If you go to North Queensland, the net zero impact will be even more severe. Resource projects in the pipeline up there would create 125,000 jobs, 36% of the current workforce. Net zero will cost us. Australia, close to 300 billion in unrealised economic activity and over 478,000 jobs. How do you replace this revenue? Well, the only person I can see warning of this crisis prior to May 21, if we're voting for Australia's future, is Senator Matt Canavan.